Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mystics of Texas. Today we are talking about the power of intent and how it can have a direct effect on you and everything that you do. And we have our very good friend and special guest, Gil, with us today. And one thing that I have uh, really that, that sparked my path of recognizing the power of intent was a documentary that we watched several years ago on water and there were these scientists doing all of these studies on water and people from various religions were uh, extending prayer just like a Catholic would with holy water and uh, Buddhist monks were praying over their water and all these different religions were expressing their good intent and so the scientist took this water and he and he did it with people uh, had a, a bunch of controlled experiments with people just holding hands around um, the same glass of water, one was out of the same source, the glasses were identical, one was in the middle of their circle, the other one was in another room. And after, the, after they uh, expressed their goodwill onto this water, they put the same source water under microscopes and the molecular changes were out of this world. Uh, the molecular structure of the one that was wished good intent upon was beautiful it made all it manifest into all these like snowflake almost type objects under the microscope and the one that came right out of the uh, tap that had nothing just set in a separate room was uh, distorted it was not pleasant to look at and and that really set me on a path of intent it, it, it reminded me of something we touched on in one of our previous recent videos about just the power of prayer no matter what religion that you're in you know like the you know nourish my food you know thank you uh, i think it's the same principle as when uh, you say thank you to somebody yeah you're giving the intent of expression you know i'm expressing my gratitude toward you uh, if you intend on doing something good in the day when you wake up you know wake up and tell yourself i I intend to be a better person today. I intend to show my love to the ones that I love. And, and I intend to be a better person. I intend to do better with my coworkers. I intend to do better with the people around me. I think it makes a big difference. What do you think about that, Mr. Gill? I, I agree wholeheartedly. Uh, setting an intent is, is, a key, is a key code of conduct. Um, an intent sends a signal, a vibrational signal. And this vibrational signal has ripples. And um, it is essential to set up an intent, whether you practice, whether you do meditation, whether you go about your day, whether you go into an appointment or to meet someone, uh, whether you spend time with your family. Intent is a key. It's a key point of uh, sending sending it the signal of what is your intent and purpose with your endeavor what is your intent and purpose and of course that goes in life itself what is the direction of your movement uh, it sets everything into motion truly is one of the uh, central pieces of the puzzle that we're putting together for example a lot of people are wondering they've been focusing for so long on manifesting something in their life or or D, manifesting something. It's just uh, They want to finish with a pattern and, and don't want to repeat that anymore. They want to manifest something that they feel they are really in lack of and they really want. And many are wondering, why is it not happening? How come I keep repeating the same pattern and I'm focusing, I'm praying? I'm... If you don't set up an intent, and also, where is the intent? Where are you setting it up? Again, if you only have it in your mind, it's not going to be enough. Because something very important to understand for this era is this is the era, and especially this period of time, of, of from here and on within the next two and three generations, the heart is the hub. If you set the intent in the mind only, then it will be easy for the ego to take it and into another detour. Uh, using that intent, but using methods that are hijacked by the program. And this is not something that we would like. What we would like 
is to create a whole new movement. And when we set the intent first in the heart and imbue it with vibrational frequencies that are coming from divine love, again, with compassion, with understanding, with patience, with humility and humbleness, to really grow, to really learn, to really become all that we can become. Now you're sending that signal and you're beginning to manifest from a whole other currency. Yes, I think that is a good point. And I, I think, too, is that whenever you express an intent within yourself before you express it to someone else, not only uh, feeling it in your head, in your intellect, but also inside of your core, in your heart, this whole region, and combining them together and expressing that, it makes a, a, a deeper meaning. To me, it, it is similar to like creating a business plan. It's like a little temporary business plan of the day or the moment. Uh, you know, like when I, I see Jill, uh, when she gets home from work, I am intending to make sure that she knows I'm glad that she's home. Uh, when I see, uh, we have someone here with us that's off camera that uh, I see almost every day. And, and when I see him, uh, I always want to express uh, my gratitude for him. Sometimes I always don't do it pro appropriately because, you know, personalities are different. You don't know, like I, I'm naturally uh, a jokester sometimes. That jokester slice of me likes to come out and play. and uh, But it makes a difference. It makes a big difference, especially uh, you know, just, just on something as mundane as going to work. You know, I'm going to enjoy myself at work today. I am not going to allow the things that have bothered me bother me. I'm not going to be as stressed. I'm going to do things methodically, and I'm going to do things calmly, and I'm going to get things done in order that they need to be done. And whenever we make those conscious decisions, you're aware of it more as your day progresses because you've already communicated it to yourself. And then it starts to manifest itself during the day. And you can pleasantly remind yourself when you see you starting to do the things that you did not intend to do that day with your personality and with your emotions. You kind of kick yourself in the butt, you know, get, get back on the right path there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. So intent is very powerful, especially in the expression of love, because I, I think the the older we get, the more we realize that uh, no matter uh, what you have, whether it's a lot or a little or somewhere in between, nothing is more important than the relationship you have with two things in my estimation, and that is a relationship with yourself and the relationship with the people around you that you love and care about. So as we navigate this this slice of reality that we experience with our five senses, it's important to express that intent to ourselves that we can love ourselves, we can forgive ourselves, we can move on with uh, the daily life and intend to express and show our love for the people that we care about. Because as we grow to the end of our days, we don't want to lay on our deathbed going, you know, man, I sure do wish I would have let them know how much I appreciated and loved them. You're not going to lay on your deathbed going, damn it, I wish I'd have got that other big screen TV. You know, <laughs> you're, you're not going to be doing that, you know. You're like, oh, well, crap, I really wanted those new pair of shoes, but, you know, <laughs> too bad I got to die today. You know, yeah, that's not what we're going to be thinking about. We're going to be thinking, how did, am I full of love? It, it, did I express that to the best of my ability? And did I intend to do it? And without that daily intent and that daily reminder and all things, uh, then it, it, it doesn't allow itself to fully manifest. You know, it kind of festers in your mind a little bit. You know, I wish I would have done this. Or but until we make a conscious effort to force an intention and force it out, and I mean, lovingly embrace it. Like, I intend to do this. I'm going to do this no matter what all you people say in here. Uh, there's, there, there's an overriding slice of me that's going to make this happen with all you people in my inner community. Yeah. yeah. Crucial. Very important.
thank you it's um um it's essential uh, intent is is inextricably combined with will willpower and to exercise our free will here is uh, something that life is calling us right now and that will immediately teach us how to set up an intent before anything we engage with uh, to set up the intent so we can align with our original destiny as spiritual beings that are wearing human spacesuits living on earth um, when you set an intent aligned with that with that universal spirit with your soul with your heart mind and body now you are beginning to steer your ocean of consciousness in the direction of that intent uh, because it is in harmony with the intent of life itself and I'm, I'm taking it into the ultimate point of intent for every that every individual is destined to to arrive at in the ultimate relationship with all life no matter in what form and shape it comes right that is beautiful yeah you know, one thing that just popped into my head is, is now that we are at the end of january we all just uh, experienced the the holidays in the united states with uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas and and we think um, a lot of people think golly you know I got to go I have to go see my family I really don't want to see that one person in my family I don't want to see this thing over here I don't want to have to deal with any of that you know that is also an intent that you're setting in your mind a negative vibration that you're creating for yourself and I think we're we all have that um, especially the larger the family you have you know there are just certain parts of them that you're like god i just really don't want to deal with that but we're setting up that energy inside of ourselves before we even start you know we're dreading getting in the the car or truck you know to, to go see our family you know, in many cases i hear it from all all around me all the time uh, during the holidays especially and and even myself, I think the I've thought the same thing on many times that, oh God, we got to go to Thanksgiving. I got to see a couple of these people I really don't want to deal with. And and I, I do my best to catch myself and say, you know, I'm going to have a, a decent time. I'm not going to allow their negative energy to uh, influence me. I might not even recognize that negative energy. I will... Um, it's almost like a little white lie to myself. I'll say, I am going to perceive their energy as positive because it probably is positive right underneath that negative. It's just a layer of the onion of their own personality that's, uh, that's radiating that, that negative force. So if I could just uh, use my mental drill bit and kind of drill underneath their negative energy, there's probably some goodness in there that I need to let that light shine out onto me instead of just focusing on the negative it's not a difficult uh, i mean it's, it's sometimes it can be a difficult task but it's never going to get any better unless we practice it unless we put one foot in front of the other and say hey i intend for this to be different i am not going to allow their energy to reflect onto me and then i give it back to them i intend to change the pattern I am breaking this mold. I'm not going to allow that to happen. And if somebody is rude, you don't have to, you don't have to reflect it. You can let it wash right over you. As I always say, just who butt it right out of the way. Let it just pass on by. Yeah, deflect. Let, 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 let it go. It's going to be okay. Just shoot back some love to them. Let them know you love them. You, you don't have to get on the level, as my mother used to say, you do not have to get on their level, son. <laughs> I don't know what level she was talking about, but it, I guess it was, you know, that level of, uh, you know, aggravation or, or rudeness or whatever. Uh, and, and I think that's uh, an important thing to that we all deal with. We all do it all the time. Sometimes it's, you know, just going to work. You know, God, I don't want to. You wake up and you're up subconsciously giving yourself the intent that you're not going to enjoy that day because you know you have to do a particular task or you got to see a particular person and you're like, so you're just telling yourself already without realizing that you're already setting the intent. You're already setting the tone for how you're going to perceive the world around you instead of going, I am going to break that pattern. I'm not going to, I can 
find ways to enjoy myself in this task. I can find ways to not be irritated being around this particular person or this group or you know whatever you find yourself in. Yeah, beautiful. A point of activation again. When you set up an intent, you're activating. You're creating a point of activation in yourself. And you actively go about it. It sets up an attitude. It, when, you, when you shift intent, you shift attitude. Attitude. And attitude is also huge. And intent and attitude and will are, uh, are a trium that works together. And it, uh, one activates the other. It, it's a chain reaction that occurs on a quantum level. And when you reach that quantum level, you, you, you will come to realize that there is already an intent in your core ready for you to rediscover, to become reacquainted with. And that's the intent of your sovereign soul and why it came here to begin with. Right. And, and, but you'll have to go through a practice, like you say. No matter how much we're going to turn it, it will come back to practice. Because practice makes better. It, it develops the skill. We become more adept at it. Um, until we don't even have to really uh, set up the intent. The intent is already activated and it is grabbing momentum. Yes, I, you just put that, you just sparked a whole light in my head that when you say practice, what we have been doing all of this time is practicing already without even being aware of it. We've been practicing having that bad attitude. We've been practicing already not wanting to go see a certain person. We're practicing already having that negative attitude before we even do a thing. And we're setting, we're setting the intent, and most people do this, and I'm very guilty of this. You set the intent beforehand on a subconscious level, and sometimes conscious, like, because you'll talk to yourself out loud, you know? You're like, crap, I don't want to have to go do this crap <laughs> instead of instantly recognizing that and going hey i don't uh i don't need that in my life i don't need that attitude i don't need to feel that way i'm used to it so it makes me comfortable i know that feeling because i've been practicing that feeling for decades now i know it i know how to live with it. i know if that guy over there says something pops off well i'm just you know i'm gonna go get him you know, there's there's that, you know, you, you're used to that. You've embraced that your whole life. And in order to break that cycle, you have to break the cycle. You have to start with a whole new fresh intent and purpose to know, hey, I don't have to live like that. I don't have to have all that anxiety. I don't have to have this resentment over there. I can let these things go. Yeah, beautifully, beautifully said, very important. And for those that are just making beginning stages or, or you know, not really fully reached and what I call the point of no return, um, it will bump off. You know, you set that intent and it's like you, you flick the switch, and but it will bump off. You know, that breaker is going to bump off. Sure. And you'll, you'll have to recognize it. It's okay. And like you said, we practice all the time that program and that's... I've, been saying it for years now that if we're not creating an alternative natural and organic process that we practice on a daily basis, we are practicing the program. Yeah. And we must understand what we are becoming when we practice the program. And then we have to understand who we're becoming when we're practicing the divine process. Because this is the fork on the road that humanity is dealing with right now in the new era. And it's, it's coming down to a simple choice. You either practice the program, but you have to carry the consequences because you have to understand who you are becoming when you're practicing that, because it has a goal. It too has a goal. It has a purpose and it has a vision and it has a, and it's holding to that. And you have the choice to either practice the divine process, putting your puzzle together, allowing your inner soul to come forth and lead the way and become the leader of your own selfhood into wholeness. That's the organic process. That's the process that is aligned with the universal codes and principles of creation, which is natural and organic to us. But humanity is, is just beginning to truly awaken to that. And so we're shifting the ratio constantly until we reach a critical mass. 
And some of us, unfortunately, will choose to continue practicing the program. And that's okay, because we're living in a free will universe. But at some point, those that will stubbornly continue to hold on to that program, at some point they will have to be removed from that planet. <laughs> yes. Yeah, because this planet will no longer tolerate that. Mama, Mama Earth Nature will no longer tolerate that, because she knows exactly what level of consciousness and intelligence she wants to host in the next epoch of time. Yeah, and we are the uh, the soul of each and every one of us are the soul of this planet. We are this planet. We are the eyes and ears and the sensations of this planet. Most people think that we just live on the planet uh, or we're just on it. I mean, we are the planet. Uh, we drink the water on this planet. We are the food of this planet. Yes. We are the beings that are able to see. Yes. We are the conscious of the earth Yes. and of all of it. We're the stewards. For sure. I think that it's very important that, uh, that that we recognize all those things. Gil, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Kevin. And yeah, if you guys enjoyed watching us, please check out all of our other videos and all of our other topics. Gil's going to be with us for a while, we hope. So he'll be with us and continue to learn and grow with us as we learn and grow. You can see us at BitChute, Rumble, Odyssey, and of course on YouTube. Thanks and have a good day.